Did you see that? D- did you see that? Could you imagine what the apostles were thinking as they were there outside Jerusalem? Now, they'd seen Jesus do amazing things. That They'd seen him heal incurable diseases. They'd seen him give sight to the blind. They'd seen him restore ability to walk to paraplegics. They'd seen him raise people from the dead. But they'd never seen something like this before. They were looking intently into the sky as he was going up. As he was talking to them, saying, go into all the world. He started to rise up from the ground and just kept going up and up and disappeared into the clouds. They had never seen anything like that. And the angels that appeared said, why are you looking into the sky? Well, redirecting their thoughts back to what Jesus had actually said. You will be my witnesses. And here's the good news. Witnesses do not have all the answers you are only called to be a witness you are not called to be an expert that is a great relief to most of us they gathered around him and they asked him lord are you going to dot 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 now here's the disciples they still have questions they spent years with him uh, And they still did not understand what God is doing. They had followed him round. They had spoken with him. They had listened to him. They had conversations with him. But still, after his death and resurrection, they still had questions that they wanted to ask. So if people ask you questions and you don't have the answers then you might feel like a apostle. (laughs) They didn't have any of the answers either. You're not supposed to have all the answers. Guess who's got all the answers? Go on. Guess who's got all the answers? Only God has got all the answers. If you had all the answers, you would be God. You do not have to be able to answer everyone who throws out a question at you or throws out a challenge to you about your faith. Lots of stuff, probably most of the stuff, you will not know the answer to and that's all right. You're not called to be an answer giver. Jesus' response was, it's not for you to know. It's not for you to know. And and it's, uh, he particularly zeroes in on times and dates. So you don't have to know when God is doing what he's doing. Now, now I admit that I think that the angels think that I'm a comedian because I tell God when he should be doing stuff. And I think the angels just (laughs) roll around the floor laughing and say, you've got to be kidding. Because I want everything done, guess what? (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah, if not sooner, yes. It doesn't work like that. But the good news is, whatever time that I have got, it's in his hands. He is Lord, not me. And so I can trust that whatever amount of time, whatever quality of time he gives me, that's in his wisdom. And when that time is up, I'll be with him. Then I'll know all the answers, but not before. There is a time that I do know, and it's this. Now is the right time. And whatever time is now, that's always the right time because every day is a day of salvation. It's a day, good day to get saved. Sunday, it's a good day to get saved. So too is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But it's also a good day to live out your salvation. The salvation that you've been given is not something to make you feel all warm and and weak at the knees. Because, oh, it's so good. It's something to be lived out, something robust. And you can do it because witnesses do have God's power. How amazing is this? We don't have answers. But we do have power. 
Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So look at this. I have got resources from beyond earth. They're given to me from beyond the whole physical universe. So what's the source of this power that I have? And it is, you'll receive power when? When the Holy Spirit comes. So when you were born again, when you asked Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit came bringing Jesus, bringing eternal life, bringing the gifts of the Spirit, bringing his fruit, bringing the opportunity for you to be more godly. That's the source of the power in my life. It's the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to be me. It's not about my cleverness. It's not about my limitations. It's about the fact that God himself is living within me so that he can live through me. And what's the purpose of this power? It's all very well and good to get the power, but why have I been given the power? Now, we could do a focus group and try and work out what the purpose is, or we could just read the same verse. You will receive power. Why? So you will be my witnesses. It's not rocket science. Here it is, the very reason why you are so powerful. It's so that God can flow through you and you can say something that is a blessing into the life of someone else. Not necessarily the answer to the question that they're asking, but the question that they need to ask. And that's just, you've experienced God in your life and this is how it worked for you. That's what a witness does. Earlier in this same conversation, Jesus had said, All authority has been given to me. Now, let me dazzle you. The word authority is the word exousia. And that's a word of power. So the power that is exercised by being in a position of privilege. And because Jesus is king, he has authority. I'm king of nothing. So I have no authority. Jesus has it all. But the other half of that is, he said, you will receive power. And that, it's a completely different word, as you can see. It's the word dunamis. And that's a word of power as well, but it's the power of capacity. It's the word of ability. It's a word of, I can do this. I am scared spitless when it comes to talking to people about Jesus. But, I can do it because I've got the power, I've got the capacity, I've got the ability to do it because I'm just telling the little bit that I know about God at work in my life. He's the king, I'm the ambassador. He's got the authority, I've got the capacity. We can do it. We can say something useful. It might not be clever, but it can be useful. And that's always better than clever. Not only have I got resources from beyond earth, I've got resources available for anywhere on earth. It doesn't matter where I go or who I bump into. Jesus ended by saying, to the ends of the earth. Now, little geography lesson. Good theology is always connected to good geography. And Jesus mentioned four locations. Jerusalem which is the capital city of Judea, you know, what used to be a larger nation called Israel. Uh, and that's the place where God established his throne. It's where the place where the temple was built, where the sacrifices were offered. Jerusalem is, uh, was in the Old Testament the key. And it's also where Jesus was crucified and where he was resurrected. And Judea is the nation around. Jerusalem's the capital. Judea is the, the nation. It's not a very big nation, but it was a nation nonetheless. Samaria is the next door nation, immediately to the north. Earlier in the Old Testament, Judea and Samaria are actually one nation. Uh, north, Samaria, South, Judea. And most of Israel, the people of Israel, lived in the north. Ten of the twelve tribes that made up the nation 
were in the north and they got carted off in war and some of them dribbled back and it, it was a bit messy uh, and then the ends of the earth was everywhere so here's a question for you oh no it's not not yet uh, Jerusalem is well that's among God's people that's where he set up his throne Judea those who are close to God we might think of that because you're not going to be able to witness in Judea and Samaria the nations that no longer exist but think about it as those who are close to God uh, Samaria those who have fallen away they used to be the, the nation of Israel but n no longer they're now someone completely different the, it's like people who you bump into them oh I used to go to church in those olden days when I was silly enough to be religious you know th those sort of people they're a bit like the Samaritans and the ends of the earth they're, they're miles away they've never even been to church nor would they so here's the question where are you most comfortable witnessing in any of those where are you, where are you most comfortable now for me uh, Jerusalem I just love being with you guys I love opening the Bible and I love discovering what God is doing that's number one for me as a second I would pick the Samaria the people who used to go to church the people who've become de-churched uh, I really feel for them I, uh, my heart goes out to them that they were so close and why didn't someone share with them how good it is to actually get over the line and be saved uh, where are you most comfortable is uh, you won't go around the room but you might pick somewhere it's actually a trick question because you don't get to choose like that uh, again let's just read what Jesus actually said and what do you think is the key word here good guess uh, Asher good job uh, it's Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth so it doesn't matter where I'm most comfortable you will get people cross your path this week and they will fall into all four categories and you've got something useful to share with any and every one of them and then finally witnesses do see a better future now I've given up watching the news on telly yeah I almost slash my wrists every evening when the news comes on they've even are you old enough to remember they would have the news and it was all bad news and then there would be sport and then there'd be the weather and then there'd be the good the good news story before they wrapped up you know yeah you know, cat rescued from tree you know small dog you know got patted so anyway, they've given up they no longer give you the good news story is there any good news stories out there well we get to see a better future look at this Jesus was taken up before their very eyes and the angels stood beside them and said why are you doing this the lesson for us is Jesus has gone into heaven but he's gone into heaven for me I'm still on earth but he's in heaven for me because Jesus is getting me ready to join him in heaven I get a, this is such a huge topic we're only going to do little more than just scratch the surface Jesus must reign this is what he's doing now until the father has put all his enemies under his feet it hasn't yet happened the world is still a bit messed up and the last enemy to be destroyed is death and when there is no death anymore then you know that Jesus reigns but he's reigning he's in charge he is Lord and whenever I'm smart enough to remember that then it's not about me anymore because he's in charge he's in charge of times and places and people and events there's nothing that happens to me that's outside his knowledge and if I'm smart enough to follow his way the way that he says this is the way walking in it then life is going to be good provided I follow him as Lord and then there's this uh, one just the one more 
Jesus is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him. That's the key element. It's got to be through Jesus. And the reason is because he always lives to make intercession for them. It's the death and resurrection of Jesus. The fact that he's alive, he's in heaven. Nothing can slow him down. Nothing can stop him. Not even death itself. It stops everyone else, but not him. And he is making intercession. And I think every day, Jesus goes to God the Father and says, You know our problem, child. And he says, Oh, not again. But Jesus intercedes and says, My blood is shed for him and covers all his sins. And he's doing the same for you. Maybe even more often than me. But he's doing the same for you, for all of us. He's, he's in heaven for us. Getting heaven ready for us and us ready for heaven. And just on the, the concept of getting heaven ready for me, he said a little earlier, In my Father's house are many dwellings. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? Well, I go and I prepare a place for you. That's partly what Jesus is doing in heaven. He's getting heaven ready for you. And it's not an original idea to me, and it's the theology is a bit thin, but I like it anyway. It's the resources that we send up to heaven that he uses to prepare the dwelling place that we will live in. It's the prayers that we send. It, it's the care. It's the love. It's the devotion. It's the words of witness. It's the generosity. It's the hospitality. It's all the things that I say and do that are building for me a home in heaven. But the other half of that story is Jesus is also coming back from heaven and he's coming for you and for me. The angel said, this same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go. Jesus is coming and there is no reason why he can't come today. There's nothing stopping him other than the fact that the Father has not yet said, time's up, go. That's all it will take. There is no other thing that is stopping Jesus from returning now. That's why everyone needs to know and be ready. He's coming. Time will be no more. The world will end. Eternity begins. And the good news is, he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. There is no better place to be than wherever Jesus is. In this wonderful heaven that he's been preparing for us. What a great future we've got. That alone is worth sharing with someone this week, that you're going to heaven. You can say to someone, where are you going? I'm going for pizza? That's nothing. I'm going to heaven. And the conversation opens up. So all will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So stand up. Lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. It's almost here. There is no reason why it can't happen. We've got to be ready because Jesus is about to appear. So what do we do? What do we do? Here's just two verses. Here's, here's a negative one first. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. Yesterday we went shopping for a, a shoe box. <laughs> I had to buy the contents of the box too. But we'll, we'll pass on that. Do you have any idea how much I love being in shopping centres? <laughs> well, <coughs> while some people might enjoy visiting shoe shops, I, I will sort of drift into a news agent. And I know that down this aisle, the first thing that I'm going to come across is the car magazines. I can flick through those. That's, that's okay. Uh, a little further down the aisle is the motorbike magazines. And my misspent youth means that I enjoy looking through those as well. But I know that I can't go any further down that aisle 
because the next group of magazines have got naked women scattered all over them. And I know that that's not good for my mental, emotional well-being. And so I will not set before my eyes anything that's worthless. You've got a remote control in your lounge room. I encourage you to use it. Do not set before your eyes anything that's worth it. Now, the other half of that is, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. There is so much that's good and so much that's wholesome that God is giving to us, that allowing us to sharing with us, that he wants us to experience and enjoy, particularly when we're following him, his law, his way, his rules. It makes life just so much better. And so, did you see that? You didn't see Jesus go to heaven, but you, you spoke with the eyewitness who saw him go to heaven. It's true. He hasn't come back yet, but you will be eyewitnesses to that event. We've got something that we can give witness to. We've got a story to tell. We've got our own personal journey to tell. We've got what little we know about Jesus to tell. We've got what little theology we know to tell. We've got good news, and it's all good news, and we're the ones that God's entrusted to share it with his world. So let me pray for us. Father, give us eyes to see. Help us to look beyond just what we enjoy doing, how we experience your love and your grace and your goodness and your loveliness to us, but rather help us to see that there's a bigger world, there's a bigger picture. There are people out there who don't know what we know. And we have been given power to be able to open our mouths and share something useful. Thank you that we don't have to have the answers. Thank you that all we need to do is just share what we know. People who know go to people who need to know Jesus. Help us to put that into practice with the people that you bring across our path this week for Jesus' sake. Amen.